Hey everyone, my name is Kira and welcome to the first video of my Japan series. So this series is all about me doing the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. Now, I did not expect that I would be making videos about my journey through Japan after getting home. I started sharing my journey on Instagram about two months ago. And in that two months or less, 45 days, I grew to 60 3,000 followers on Instagram. I did not expect that at all. I didn't think people would want to watch me walk a pilgrimage in Japan. However, they did. And I really appreciated all the support I got, all the love, all the people cheering me on from around the world. So as a thank you, I'm creating some videos that answer your questions and help you understand the pilgrimage better. And for those who want to do it, how they can go about doing it safely and also in a nice way with the locals. So if you have questions, comment them below. I will try my best to answer them. Otherwise, in this series, you are going to get videos like frequently asked questions, which includes the cost of me walking the pilgrimage, also the gear, my guidebook, why I did it, my story, etc. However, in this video, this is the first one, I am making a basically compiling all the videos from Instagram from day one to day 45. So I was doing daily vlogs over on Instagram about everything that happened in the day, all the locals I met, the locals that helped me and gave me either free housing or free food as a gift, um, all the people I met, what I ate, where I stayed, etc. So I'm putting all that in one video so you can all watch it from day one to 45 seamlessly instead of trying to navigate on Instagram, which can be quite tricky. And yeah, that will be all this video for now, uh, but click subscribe because the next video, I will be talking my frequently asked questions. And if you have questions and you comment them early enough in this video, I will try and answer them in the next one. All right, guys, well, this is my gift to you, my Osethai, for supporting me during my journey. Hope you like it. Good morning, everyone. I have just got off the train at Bando and I'm on my way to Temple One. So that's where I officially start the pilgrimage to the 88 temples of Shikoku. First up, let's go get the pilgrim gear. I've just met a Japanese voice actress. This lovely lady and her family invited me into the temple with them and explained me all the processes on what to do, including hand washing and how to do a prayer. Temple one was beautiful with these beautiful lanterns all over the roof. When leaving, I met the author of my guidebook out the front, which is just crazy. I saw a lot of different temples over the day and walked it in total six. In each temple, it was very different and the road kept changing from roads to forest. At each temple you can collect a calligraphy stamp. The beautiful family I met at Temple One invited me for lunch. Then I continued off on my own, exploring the Sakura that was blooming above me. Every temple was so unique and different to the one before it. I eventually got to Temple Six and got my final stamp and explored the grounds. Tonight I'm sleeping in the abandoned bell tower of Temple Six. Let's go have a look. The temple allowed me to stay for free in the abandoned bell tower above the gate. Let's hope no one rings the bell. Good morning. It's day two of the 88 Temple Pilgrimage, which is 1,200 kilometers across Shokoku, Japan. Now, I am walking on a lot of concrete today. It's just how it is. I eventually found some greenery in the urban jungle. I visited Temple 6 all the way to Temple 11 and had my lunch with some sushi and tea. Along the way, I saw a lot of tobacco farmers and they helped me when I was lost. I follow these signs to find the temples and then I enjoy the nature. My path has just come to an abrupt end, so I'm detouring. Unfortunately, the detour brought me along a main road, but I eventually reached this river. I'm crossing the Yoshino River right now and I'm on my way to the little town that Temple 11 is in and that is where I'm going to spend the night. I had miso for dinner and then got into bed for an early start climbing the two mountains tomorrow. Guys, that was probably the hardest day I've had on the trail yet. Day three started by finding this little gem of a guy who invited me into his house and offered me tea. He told me to take his bike and ride his bike to the temple where I can use the toilet. 
I had some tea, got a stamp in my book, had a look at Temple 11 and then hit the mountain trail. I've got two mountains to climb today. I've actually changed to sandals for one of the highest and hardest days on the whole pilgrimage because my Achilles tendon is swollen. The views were insane. The next six hours looks a bit like this. While I was in the mountains, I still received gifts from strangers like this guy here. And then I met this older man who wanted to hula hoop with me, so I taught him some tricks. He joined me for about an hour on the trail and we shared our life via hand signals. Downhill! <laughs> Just when I thought the mountain was over, there was another mountain to climb. And this one was harder. So the monks said no to me staying at the temple. They said they have an event on tonight and I can't stay. So I'm walking the hour and a half down the mountain. That hour and a half took a really long time, but it was beautiful. And this is where I camped. I am on day four of the trail and I'm on my way to Kamayana and I'm leaving the mountains. It's quite cold up here and I'm going to hit up some hot springs. First things first, packing up the tent and having a hula hoop with hey! the owner of the house. <laughs> and then I've walked through the forest all the way down towards the city. My car's just pulled over <laughs> and passed me some snacks, which is just so nice. The views quickly changed from mountains to city life, and I found this cute bakery. It's raining, and this part of the walk is along a busy road, which sucks. Along the road, there was still some beautiful views, and I followed this river for a while, until I saw these ladies picking something off the side of the road. They gave me some to try, and actually it was really good. Those ladies that offered me some of the vegetable, which I don't know what it is, before on the side of the road, just chased me down in their car with more. <laughs> and she told me I need to dip it in salt. This hut behind me is literally created just for pilgrims to have a spot to rest out of the rain and the cold. I passed a few farms and I got my stamp at the temple. After a good chat with the temple owners, they let me pitch my tent up on the main temple deck. I honestly can't believe this is where I slept. I'm walking across this tiny little ledge uh, between two farmlands trying to rejoin a road. Day five of the walk brought me back through the city, which was a good chance to rest and get rid of some extra gear. My path has just come to an end again, and now I'm at a railroad crossing. For now I'm in someone's garden. I visited temples 14, 15, 16, and finished with Adoji. I kept getting lost in the tiny streets of Tokushima. Today I'm walking back through Tokushima city. That is where I started the walk. So the pilgrimage does a loop um, up to the forest and then comes back through. I left about a kilo of gear that I wasn't using with a local in Tokushima. I continue to get our setai from locals, including mandarins and sweets. And while walking the city, a windstorm started to hit. While looking for accommodation, I met Dave from USA and he invited me to see the Tokushima traditional dance at the cultural center. Been up on carbs for tomorrow. It's raining so much and so cold. This is what day six on Ohenra looked like. I am leaving Tokushima city. It's a little bit wet. Lucky these hats have a rain cover. And I'm hoping to do about 28 kilometers today. Along the way, I kept getting gifts from locals. Ran out with this for me, which is a little cake. It was a very rainy day and locals kept asking if I wanted a lift. I just ate all my food. I'm realizing I need more food every day as I walk more. And locals have left like cushions and blankets. Just had to change socks because they got really wet. And I've still got like another two hours. I eventually left the hut and continued my walk. It was still raining. I can do this. The temples and the trail look so beautiful in the rain and the sunset was phenomenal today over the mountains. I started walking up to my hut. I've been walking for probably 12 hours today. And this is the view from the hut. It's so windy in this tent. I don't know if I'm gonna get any sleep. Follow me on the next 39 days. So I've taken the wrong road again, but I've ended up in this beautiful dead end. And there's a little ladder over here. So I'm gonna climb it. This is day six walking through Japan. Let's see what's up the top. While walking towards Taruji, which is Temple 22 on the trail, I got severely lost, but found this amazing temple just up this ladder and route. The views were incredible. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little scared because it was very high without any barrier. 
I'm literally in the trees on top of a mountain. On this tiny little ledge, very high above the ground, is this beautiful temple. I've just walked four k's in the wrong direction. A little old lady in a truck just pulled over and told me I'm going the wrong way. That's added about eight k's to the journey today. That's about two hours roughly extra of walking. <laughs> this is day seven walking on the trail. First, I packed up from my beautiful campsite with the sunrise view. I started my journey up the mountain on the way to the temple. I got my stamp at the temple and started my way down the mountain. A lot of the trail today is going past this stream. At the bottom of the mountain, I found this vending machine, which you're gonna find a lot throughout the trail. And I crossed beautiful rivers. I met this older woman who gave me gifts as I walked up the mountain. I'm about to enter temple 22. This temple was one of my favorites and someone also gave me osetai at the top, which was good because I was hungry. Tonight I stayed in a Japanese homestay because all my clothes were so wet, I needed to dry them. They gave me pajamas, made me this amazing meal and even had a bath. Follow my journey on the next 38 days guys a family of wild monkeys just crossed the path right in front of me they're really scared of me this is day eight walking on henry trail along the way you find many different signs that show you the trail direction today i'm aiming not to get lost i've got 30 kilometers to walk today i was surprised when a family of wild monkeys crossed my path now I know what was outside my tent the other night. I love the scenery today and I stopped for a snack in a hut and passed many rice fields being planted. The temple today had beautiful architecture and mostly made of wood. I received gifts from a biker, a cleaner and a man in a truck. I kept studying my guide to make sure I didn't get lost today. Then I met another pilgrim who was also camping along the way so we decided to walk together. The trail today followed a road and lots of tunnels. We made it to Temple 23 just before it closed. Then a local showed us these Henry huts that are specially designed for Henry's to camp. Then it's hula hoop time. Follow me on the next 37 days. Currently looking for somewhere to camp. This is day nine walking 35 kilometers along her Henry. First thing, packing up the tent and some breakfast. 80 kilometers to the next temple. So we have a long way to go. It was a really big day, but it was motivating to have someone to walk with. I saw so many eagles flying above us as we walked the trail. We passed by this beautiful creek and we thought, what a perfect place to have a shower. But it was absolutely freezing. <laughs> it's really windy. <laughs> passed by this fish highway, we finally reached the ocean. <laughs> Walking by the ocean, I kept thinking, is like this Australia or Europe? It doesn't look like what I thought Japan would look like at all. We explored the rock pools to see what we could find. There were many huts along the way that would be perfect for camping, but we made sure we were close enough to a convenience store to get some dinner and then enjoyed this beautiful, beautiful sunset. Join me on the next 36 days. I'm trying this thing. I don't know what it is. It's very sticky. Not and chewy. Not chicken. Not chicken. <laughs> I hope not. This is day 10 walking to Henro. We started walking at sunrise. We've just packed up our tent and we are on our way. He just realized he left his walking stick at the hut. I'm surprised every day at how safe Japan is and that nothing gets stolen here. The scenery kept reminding me of a European holiday. We stopped at a roadside station and charged up our power banks. We're on the 80 kilometer stretch between the two temples. We officially entered the Kochi prefecture and walked through quaint little fishing villages. Lunch break. Our walk was cut short today by an invitation. We just got invited into some, a local's house to stay. Turned out that he was a famous Japanese race car driver. He invited us to the local onsen where girls and boys are separated. Then he took us for sushi where we ate a lot and we all slept in the same room. 35 days to go. We're set for another rainy day. This is day 11 of 45 days walking Ohenra in Japan. On this 80 kilometer stretch between two temples the views are pretty much the same. Ocean to your left, road on your right. We stopped for so many snack breaks and today's path was really easy to follow on the way to temple 24 and I've hurt my knee. Um, I'm not sure even how. My knee was so bad I had to stop at the next guest house and say bye to my friend. Gambate. The rest of the day I took it really easy and the guest house always runs you a hot bath which you share with all the guests there. It felt a little weird to be resting and not walking. The guest house prepared me a fully vegetarian dinner which was so good. I hope I'll be able to continue on the next 34 days. 
Day 12 started off a little bit different. This is what today's 20K looked like. My day started by being invited to the guest house daughter's school to do a little hula hoop show for the kids, which they absolutely love. Yeah. The owner is a surfer and this is the best homestay I've stayed at on the whole trail. After a warm goodbye, I continue my walk. You can see I don't have my backpack because of my knee pain. The guest house offered to drive my backpack to the next place which is just so kind. Without the weight of my heavy pack, I was able to walk 20 Ks along the beautiful coastline and gave my knee a bit of a rest. I'm just about to hit the Cape of Moroto. You'll see these markers in trees marking the way. The walk up to Temple 24 was a very steep climb, but the views were worth it. I got my calligraphy stamp in the book from the temple and I continued on my way to the homestay where I had a gorgeous view of the temple. Follow me on the next 33 days walking the pilgrimage. I'm literally walking along a black volcanic beach right now. This is day 13 walking Ohenro in Japan. I'm still getting used to the thinness of a Japanese mattress. Today it's raining so I'm not sure how far I'm gonna get on the walk but I'm gonna give it a go. But this is my view of the temple. Our locals just gifted me this umbrella. Temple 25 was located at the top of the steep staircase. It's back to just me walking solo. I said goodbye to my friend because he's walking a bit quicker than me. The walk today was a mix of beach and forest views. I ran into a few other campers and continued on to Temple 26. On the stairs there were lots of coins and I got my stamp in the temple. The next temple is 27 kilometers away. It's been raining all day and I've got 4k still to the campsite. The path is not very well maintained. <laughs> I'm walking to a hut located just up on the cape and that's where I'm going to spend the night. Follow me on the next 32 days. This is officially two weeks walking of Henro in Japan. This is day 14 walking the 88 temples pilgrimage. I had a slow start before packing up my tent and then a local greeted me with a coffee. He didn't speak English so he spoke through his translator device and the language of hula hoop. He played his Japanese flute for me before I said goodbye and continued on my walk. I tried a rainbow coffee and found this abandoned train. What do you guys think about this campsite? I met two other French pilgrims who also walked the Camino. I am walking about 15 kilometers today, which isn't that much. French guys told me about an amazing homestay, so I went to check it out. When I arrived, she offered me free lunch, a rice ball, and we had a little hula hoop before she told me her story. Walking to the onsen. On the way to the onsen, we met these locals who wanted to show us this beautiful flag. The onsen was amazing, but very busy, so I spent the whole time trying to hide my tattoo from the locals. We had a group dinner, and then Masona invited me to stay in her room the night and even tucked me in with a hot water bottle. Click follow to join me on the next 31 days of this adventure. Ha, <laughs> I'm lost again. <laughs> Day 15, walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage looked like this. I said goodbye to my new friend. On my way to Kochi City, about two more days till I'm there. This coastline is gorgeous. Had a little snack break, enjoying the views. I can't find my drink bottle. I left it at the last place. I've just gone back to find it. The hill up to Temple 27 is really steep. It's about four k's long. So one of the locals has said I can keep my bag at the house so I don't have to carry it up the hill. Look what I found. I've just arrived to drop off my bag and my drink bottle is here waiting for me. The kindness of Japanese people surprises me every day. The walk up to the temple was beautiful. The view's amazing and I continued on my way. I am loving the sunsets on this part of the walk. Sun was setting, so I needed to find a camp. I'm currently sussing out a wild camping spot and it looks pretty good. It's on an island. Follow along on the next 30 days walking Ohenro, Japan. After a quick tent pack up, I started day 16 of Ohenro in Japan. My walk started with a friendly hello from this guy. I am met with so many locals every day coming up to me, running across car parks to say what little English they know to me. Sometimes it's only two or three words. Today's trail was mostly on the coast and I watched fishermen fish and dry out their catch. The path has suddenly changed. After a bit of a rock scramble, I got stuck on the beach. Okay, I found my way off the beach, across this plank of wood, and then up there to the ladder. I survived the rickety ladder and I continued my way down the coast to stop at Lawson for breakfast. I'm eating most of my breakfast and lunch at convenience stores along the way. Noodles for breakfast, when in Rome. Today was about a 30k walk and I arrived to the outskirts of Kochi City. Tonight I stayed in a homestay because it's really hard to find a camp in the city. Follow along in the next 29 days. It's nearly dark and I'm just about to reach the last temple, but it's up this massive staircase. Welcome to day 17 walking Ohenro in Japan. 
the day started visiting Temple 28. I have entered Kochi City, where there's a cluster of temples after having no temples for a few days. The temples were surrounded by nature, and after getting my temple stamp, I continued in the back street. I'm currently walking between two rice paddy fields. I witnessed the entire process of planting a rice paddy field and saw this local selling eggs in a vending machine. After a delicious lunch, I continued on my way to visit the rest of the temples all scattered through Kochi City. I was surprised with the nature that surrounded the temples and the city. I saw my first stalk and witnessed more locals just doing their thing. Back in the city means following the green line. I highly overestimated how far I could walk in one day and it quickly got dark. This was the scariest night camping as I got lost in a graveyard trying to find the site. This is my view in the morning. Follow on the next 28 days. Good morning. It's a beautiful sunny day and I'm about to pack up my campsite and catch the ferry. This is what day 18 looked like walking in Japan. The trail took me in forests, on roads, up to temples and I got a setai on the way. Today the trail included a ferry crossing. To get to Temple 33 you need to catch a ferry which I'm on and it is free. Got my calligraphy stamp at the temple and met this woman collecting her stamps on a scroll. I received more setai gifts and fruit and coffee as I walked. I'm on my way to Temple 34. I've left the city and I'm back in the countryside of Shikoku. These local kids walked with me for a while and then I met Juliet from Wales who gave me a good positive boost. Oh, are we lucky? The sun is setting and I have been walking since 7 a.m. this morning and I've covered over 30 kilometers. I slowly made my way up the hill to the homestay. We ate, we hula hooped, we had a lot of fun and I collapsed into bed. Follow the adventure in the next 27 days. Guys, I don't know what day it is anymore, but I've just left an amazing homestay in the mountains and I'm on to Temple 35 today. Okay, this is day 19 walking on Henro. I said goodbye to my amazing host and she waved goodbye for so long. And then I went up to the temple where I got more Osetai gifts and had a little bit of a rest before making my way down the massive staircase all the way back to town. I made more Japanese friends along the way and enjoyed the views. I followed the signs to the coast where I met a friend in the park who I didn't realize was the ex-chairman of Kochi. A guy just came up to me in his truck because he heard that I was going to camp and offered me the stairs in his house. <laughs> I didn't realize that this man would contact all his friends and ask them if they could come and help me find somewhere to stay. He organized his friend to drive us to the school where we got to stay in this amazing hotel. I just never got to say thank you to this old man. If you're watching, thank you. Only 26 more days of walking and it's forgot us and it's turned around and come back for us. This is what happened on day 20 walking on Henro. We started off early towards the port. It's 7 a.m. and we're walking towards the ferry to catch it all the way through this lake inlet thing. <laughs> I still don't know what this body of water was called, but we crossed it in a local boat. We're zigzagging through all these tiny little villages. Saw local fish farms on the water and then continued in the forest till we met this guy who showed us this shrine and read us this plaque. I'm still in such awe at Japanese forests. We passed through the city where we had Mossberger and then onto the coast where we visited a new shrine. We ran into an old friend, Shohei, and continued together on the road. We popped our dinner and our breakfast and lunch tomorrow and we are on our way to a roadside station to camp. In Japan, you can stay for free at roadside stations and above this one was an onsen which we took full use of. Two ladies at the onsen gave us gifts of food and then we went back to our campsite for the night. Follow along the next 25 days of this adventure. Let's check out this little Henro hut I just found in the middle of the forest. This is what happened day 21 walking in Japan. We slowly packed up our campsite. Good morning. I have said goodbye to my friends because today I feel like walking alone. Today's path meandered through freshly blooming flowers, rivers and forest. It's gotten really hot walking the trail along the coast during week three. There were quite a few steep climbs today and I passed across some roads. I've been walking since 7 a.m. this morning with lots of breaks and I'm nine minutes away from Temple 37, just up this hill, and that's where I'm gonna sleep tonight. The temple was decorated beautifully and quite modern. I got my stamp and then went and got dinner. Noodles for dinner again. <laughs> I met up with my camping friends again at the temple and we had dinner and then I taught them how to hula hoop, of course. We listened to the monk do the morning prayer and had a look at all the paintings on the ceiling. We just arrived at the Zen Cognado and it's this gorgeous little hut. This is day 22, walking the 88 temple pilgrimage. We said goodbye to the shed the temple let us sleep in and were given this money envelope as a present. We continued through the forest and found this soft bamboo. Hot break. 
We kept checking the map to make sure that we didn't go the wrong way and had another lunch break with this amazing Inari sushi. Just stop the traffic so that we can cross the road. <laughs> The Japanese are always looking out for your safety here. We're making our way around Ino Cape to a Zen Cognado where we're going to sleep tonight. It was interesting to see rice paddy fields and the ocean together. We passed this guy selling octopus balls so we thought why not give it a try. Last tunnel and then we're at the Zen Cognado. At the supermarket this man gave us more gifts of fruit and we approached the shrine where we'd sleep the night. Look at this interesting log. Follow along as I walk 1,200 kilometers around Shikoku Island in Japan. The temperature has dropped majorly. I've been warned by some of the monks that it's about to get really cold and I'm a little worried about camping in this kind of weather. This is day 23 walking Ohenra in Japan. The day started off dry and we walked through the forest towards the coast, but quickly turned into a very wet day. Guys, the weather has not eased up. It's raining even more now. So I'm going to get to the closest onsen and just set up for the day. Even though it was raining, there was lots of surfers out. Very quickly, I got drenched to the core and my body started to shiver from the cold. I'm gonna have a go at hitchhiking in Japan and see if it will get me to the onsen so I can warm up a bit. And by then, maybe the rain will have stopped and I can keep walking. In just a minute of my thumb being out, this car pulled over and they were going to the onsen too. Onsens are amazing. This was the first night of the trip I stayed in a paid campground. Only 22 more days to go. I thought that sign meant go this way. It doesn't and I just followed the wrong trail for a really long time. Day 24 walking our hen road started really windy. <laughs> I still can't believe that this scenery is Japan. I left a moss hut on the wall for other pilgrims and stopped at this udon bar for lunch and it was so good. And this is why I get lost. Should I go down or up? Down or up? Today was a getting lost kind of day. I've just taken an alternative route because the path was going through a tunnel and there's a really steep climb. The locals put ropes here for you to hold on to while you climb through the bamboo. The views today were incredible when I got to the bottom of the mountain. Then a local got out of his truck and chased me with chocolates. Mmm, I really needed that chocolate. <laughs> I haven't had lunch today. The views changed back to rice paddy fields and rivers. My trail just turned into a river. <laughs> That I can't cross. After a rain day, my room quickly turns from this to this. And we ate dinner with our host. Follow along in the next 21 days. I've just found the oldest granite cave in Japan. This is day 25 walking our Henry. Let's do it. Our homestay host was amazing. She opens her garage every day for Henro's to leave their bag because when we're walking the cape, we have to do a loop and return back the same way. I made my way down the cape through the forest. I just ate most of my food to lighten my bag. Then this local picked me some fruit. I met an awesome Japanese Henru and eventually made it to Temple 38. I love the look of this temple and the turtle's important symbol. I heard there was a granite archway. Let's go take a closer look. And that it's the oldest in Japan, but there's a lot of stairs to see it. I forgot my stick at the temple, so I had to run back to get it. This lady pointed out a beach whale and this lady invited me into her house to show me her artwork. Yeah, I just pushed myself through that. Next, this awesome lady stopped me on the way to my campsite and invited me to stay in her home. She invited me to try a local Japanese dish. And so far, this is my favorite food I've tried in Japan. Any more days to go. She invited me to stay in her house last night and now she's on her bicycle going with me on the walk. This is day 26 walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. Miwa made me a traditional breakfast and then joined me on her bicycle to walk the trail. This tomato farmer showed us her farm and gifted me tomatoes. Then I continued my walk solo. This man pulled over to give me a gift. I continued into the woods and they said I kept coming. I just got candy. Someone had left cold drinks for pilgrims and I left an Osama footer in return. I stopped for lunch at this river and I was surprised by my friend from last night. He told me that I can camp at the temple. There's a little car park. I spotted lots of animals on the way and took in the breathtaking views. And once again, the sun is setting and I am still walking. I've been walking all day and I'm nearly at the temple where I'm going to sleep tonight. I'm also carrying some dinner, which is two minute noodles from Lawson Convenience Store. My favorite place to get dinner, not. Only 19 days left to finish the walk. I'm currently climbing this mountain in the rain and I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty hard. But every about 100 meters, there's these little plaques written by the local primary school and they have little messages on them like, keep going, you've got this, eat my fish. <laughs> this is day 27 walking in Japan. Rain started while packing up my tent and at the temple I met my old camping friend. I realized Lawson overcharged me and they gave me all this food as a sorry. A truck just drove past me and splashed me. 
I love how different Japan looks in the rain than Australia. I started climbing up the mountain in the rain and saw the, all these little plaques that were made by the kids at the local primary school. They say things like, good job, you can do it. The cloud cover got really intense up on the mountain. Locals left sticks for people to use climbing the mountain. Don't think I'll be able to camp in this rain. It hasn't let up all day. All accommodation was booked, but my new friend Kazuo met on the trail so that I could share his room since there was nothing else available. And there was an onsen. Follow me on the next 18 days. When you're walking through the dense forest and then oh, suddenly you see this. This is day 28 walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. Good morning. We've just started walking. This is my new friend. Kazuo and I walked past waterfalls and rivers and through forests. We made a few friends along the way and they gave us gifts of fruit. We eventually made it to Temple 40 and it was beautiful. I got my temple stamp before we continued our way along the coast. This is the mountain we're going to climb. I quickly lost Kazu on the mountain because he's like a mountain goat. It's a pretty tough one. I don't want to go up anymore. The views were completely worth the steep climb. So this is a hut that you can sleep in halfway up the mountain and there's fresh water just over here tasted so fresh. After catching up to Kazu, we walked down the mountain together towards a hut where we were going to camp. Unfortunately, this hut had a no camping sign. I asked them if we can and they said no. So, we are going to walk a few kilometers more and it's about to turn dark because there's one more rest hut along the way. I was glad not to be walking alone in the dark. At the next hut, we ran into Shohei and we all camped together. Follow along on the next 17 days. It's surprisingly sturdy. This is what happened on day 29, walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage in Japan. Our day started off with a coffee gift from the locals and a walk to the local bakery. Today's path crossed through forests and onto roads towards the city. On the trail, there's extra temples called the Bakaku temples and I visited the one in this city. I continued on to Temple 42 to collect my stamp and then pass by this lake. Next up was Temple 43 and I met this beautiful family that was walking the temple together. This little boy came up to me to give me a sweet snack. I've just climbed up this mountain and I've come to a, a dead end where the path has literally fallen away. And my path is now wanting me to go up this ladder to get to the other side. I'm a little concerned climbing that ladder with this backpack. Well, here we go. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Down the mountain, things got more confusing. This is the moment that I normally get lost because there's a sign with three options. I don't know what it says. This forest path was beautiful with waterfalls and river crossing. It's nearly sunset, so I better hurry. Otherwise I'll be hiking in the dark. I made it to my accommodation by sunset, which was in a local restaurant above the dining room. Follow the journey on the next 16 days. Hiking for one month straight has finally got to me and I'm finding it really hard to keep going. Welcome to day 30, walking the 88 temple pilgrimage in Japan. Today started slow and I walked through the forest, past shrines and met some locals and taught them how to pull a hoop. I got my stamp at the temple and then continued onwards to the next temple. At the temple, I got gifted this water bottle from another pilgrim. He was Japanese and he's done this pilgrimage seven times. Along the path, there's many shrines and temples that aren't part of the 88 temple pilgrimage, but you can visit as well. The views continue to amaze me walking past rivers. Tonight I'm staying in a Zen Cognado, and that is a pilgrim house that's a donation-based place to sleep. I ran into two other French pilgrims that I'd met previously staying at the Zen Cognado too. In the area, there was no other accommodation, so they had to stay there. It was great to spend the night with them, and we left a note in the Zen Cognado book. Click follow to join the adventure. This is day 31, walking 1,200 kilometers across Japan on the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. My morning started slow, and I followed a winding road. In Shikoku, you find roadside fruit stalls a lot from local farms and I've just come across a strawberries one. After topping up my snacks, I continued following the winding road. Today the path is following the Oda River. It's beautiful. The water is so clear. I stopped at a local udon bar to have lunch and then I continued up the mountain to Temple 44. I ran into my Dutch friend again, who's doing a hen row on his bicycle. Then I re-entered the forest towards Temple 44. The gate to the temple was really unique and had these rope shoes lining the doorway. 
up a couple of sets of stairs, I got my calligraphy stamp at the temple and then continued my way back to the town to stay at this guest house. I was surprised to run into a lot of old friends I'd met on the way here and I gave everyone a little show and taught them how to hula hoop. Follow along in the next 14 days. I just climbed that ladder and I'm now in this cave with coins all over the wall. Welcome to day 32, walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. Good morning. Today I'm pretty much walking just through the forest and it is beautiful. It's a nice break from the roads. It's been over a month and I still can't get enough of Japanese forests. Sometimes there's no path and you're just walking on the side of the road like right now. And the cars are really close to me. Today's path did a big loop up to the temple and then came back through the same town so I could leave my backpack at the guest house. Felt amazing to walk through the forest without a 12 kilogram pack on. Today I saw lots of snakes on the trail and some locals shared their food and tea with me. Temple 45 is one of my favorite temples I visited. It was beautiful and I had this tiny cave you can climb up into. Break time. I slowly made my way back to town and I was gifted this fan that belonged to his mother. What will happen on day 33? This is day 33 walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. I started walking with two French pilgrims and then a local offered us a lift. Weather was really bad so we said yes. This was her first time helping Ohenru. She said that when she was in Australia so many people helped her and she wanted to help someone in her country. Today I visited in total six temples and collected a lot of stamps. I also visited an extra Bakaku temple and got this as a gift. I also got lost and locals helped me by showing me the way. It was easy walking today in the streets of Matsuyama City, so I enjoyed meeting lots of locals. I stopped for lunch at my favorite Japanese curry house. It seems Matsuyama is a really busy and big city. I'm actually walking faster than the cars are going. I came across many local signs that the locals made for Henro's, and I rang many, many bells. The art in the temples is beautiful, from hand-painted ceilings to origami. And today I met many temple cats. Today's last temple was 51, and it was one of the most unique temples I've seen. I ran into many familiar faces in the temple grounds too. There's really nowhere to camp, and every guest house is booked because it's the holiday week in Japan. As always, something came up and I found a room. I had some street food with some other pilgrims. and enjoyed the sights and sounds of Matsuyama. Only 30 more days left. I'm not used to having this many people around me after walking through villages for the last few weeks. This is day 34 walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage in Japan. Today was a rainy day and it didn't start very well. It's the absolute worst when you've walked about, I don't know, 20 minutes and you realize you forgot your stick at the last place and you have to turn around and go get it. The locals were still out farming in the rain. It's really hard to follow the path in cities and I keep going the wrong way it's so annoying because it adds a lot of time to the day i visited the last few temples in matsuyama city in the rain temples have a different vibe when it rains this temple had a unique fully enclosed bell tower this was my calligraphy stamp it's just started to rain i'm gonna head into this cafe and wait it out my new favorite japanese food is curry i braved the rain again to see more temples it's still raining a little bit less than before but it's still just as annoying. Did you know you can leave your backpack outside 7-Eleven and no one will steal it? Only a few more k's in the rain and then I'll get to a Zen Cognado. This kind couple invited me in for tea and then I arrived at the Zen Cognado. The locals showed me the toilet and I shared the accommodation with one other pilgrim that night. Follow along in the next 12 days. Luckily one of you guys has reached out to me in my messages and asked if I wanted to come and stay so thank you so much, Chris. This is day 35, walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage in the rain. It's even hard to film in this much rain. I ran into my friend from Estonia who was doing the pilgrimage on a bike. I've just arrived at the temple and it started pouring even stronger. Even though it was raining, I had to keep going because I was running out of days. I'm currently walking through a cemetery. <laughs> I entered the outskirts of Mbari City and I stopped at 7-Eleven to get some lunch. Food at convenience stores in Japan is so good and fresh. I continued on to the next temple because there was many to see today. I accidentally walked the stairs to this shrine thinking it was a temple. Chris Cohen picked me up soon from the next temple and I get a nice warm bed tonight and to connect with some locals here. I stopped to snack some bread I got from a local. I've just made it to the last temple that I'm going to visit today and I am 
drenched. I really like this temple and the lady from the stamp office showed me around. Then this awesome lady called Chris came and picked me up. She showed me the family farm and introduced me to her lovely Japanese family. I also got some cut cuddles. She took me out to try a local Mbari restaurant and I got to taste her homemade plum wine. Thank you, Chris, so much for the warm stay. And like, how awesome are the people of Shikoku? This view is amazing. Welcome to day 36, walking the 88 temple pilgrimage in Japan. Morning, I have just said goodbye to Chris and I'm walking out of Imbari to Saigyo. Today started off with a detour. After a beautiful climb up to the temple, I ran into some pilgrim friends I met a few days ago. I love all the chance meetings that I have on this pilgrimage. Back in the forest today, I'm walking towards temple 60. Today I was aiming to visit four temples. I was so glad the rain had stopped. After coming down the mountain, I ran into this local. He asked if he could take my photo. So I thought, why not? Let's give him a hula hoop show. He was so happy he gave me a thousand yen. I tried to refuse, but he just wouldn't take no for an answer. I continued on my walk to the next temple and ran into two Australians also doing the pilgrimage. Then I ran into a Dutch pilgrim on a bike. I love looking at all the different ornaments in the temple. I got to my homestay and this lady was the nicest. She showed me her house and all the different artifacts that she had. She gave me a tour of every single room and gave me her recommendation of which one I should stay in. Of course I taught her to hula hoop too. I've just entered the last temple for today with my new friend. The homestay owner joined me for my last temple of the day and we met her friend on the way back. I just bought my dinner, breakfast and lunch for tomorrow and that is the view of the sunset. I love staying the night in this traditional Japanese house. Only nine more days of this adventure to go. One of you has invited me to come and pick Japanese tea leaves with you. This is what happened on day 37 walking the Ohenro. The day started by running into short hair. We sung nursery rhymes on the way to Temple 64. It's over. Aww. <laughs> Temple 64 felt like a monastery in the hills. I wandered the grounds, enjoying the scenery, got my calligraphy stamp, and then said goodbye to Shohei. Then it was tea picking time. First I learned how to identify the young leaves from the mature leaves and which ones to pick. We're picking tea leaves by this beautiful waterfall. Woo! <laughs> we changed picking locations multiple times to make sure we got the young leaves. Next up was a delicious home cooked lunch. And some hula hooping. Next up was sorting the tea leaves and making sure no twigs got in. Then it was steaming. And after we used our hands to squish them and give them good bacteria. Last step was sun dry. My new friend's granddad also done her Henry and he showed me all his mementos. We also visited her dad who showed me his Henry diary. Thank you so much Aya for your incredible hospitality. This is day 38 on the 88 temple pilgrimage in Japan. The day started with thanking Aya with a special asomai fuda and having breakfast before saying goodbye and starting my way up the mountain. Today I'll visit the second highest temple on the whole pilgrimage. And it's all the way up there. I stopped on the way for a quick back scratch. I'm really getting tired of carrying this backpack. Today's climb up the mountain is one of the most beautiful I've experienced in the whole pilgrimage with crossing rivers and waterfalls multiple times. At the temple, the flowers were in full bloom. After a quick visit, I made my way down the mountain because it was going to be a long descent of a few hours. Along the way, I made a friend too. Currently walking down the mountain from Temple 60. This mountain is one of the highest in the region. The path down was wild and unmaintained and the path was very narrow. At the bottom of the mountain, I made my way to the train, which for various reasons, I chose not to walk the next leg and I'll leave them in the caption. I met up with Anna at a Zen Cognado and met this famous pilgrim who has done the Ohenro pilgrimage nearly 800 times. This is his once white shirt that's been stamped so many times at the temples, it's now red. Follow along on the last seven days of my 45 day journey. Welcome to day 39 of the 88 temple pilgrimage and I'm nearing the end. The day started with saying goodbye to Anna and dropping her to the train station with our new friend. Next, I invited our host to join me at the temple that morning and we recited mantras together and walked the temple grounds. After receiving my calligraphy stamp at the temple, I said goodbye to my new friend. Today, I am climbing to the highest temple of the whole pilgrimage and it's 1000 meters high. Today's path was full of lush forests and a local offered me a lift that I kindly refused. The perfect spot for a lunch break. While walking, I stumbled across a Bakako temple, which is an extra temple along the pilgrimage. This temple looks so inviting and beautiful that I decided to visit it and get a stamp as well. Then I met the head monk of the temple and he came to give me these gifts. He asked me what my hula hoop was, so I decided to give him a show. He saw my bamboo stick that I found in the forest and came back with the temple stick and gave it to me as a gift. I'm about 100, 200 meters up the mountain now and I'm not gonna reach the temple before it closes. 
so I am going to camp here the night and then summit the mountain in the morning. This is the Henry hut that I set my tent up in for the night. I've just set up my tent in the little hut and I've realized it's all moldy. Six days to go. The expressions on these statues is so lifelike. This is day 40 on the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. Today I climbed to the highest temple on the pilgrimage, Unpenji. But let's start at the beginning where I packed up my tent and started my climb up the mountain. Today I will reach 911 meters in elevation. I'm out of water so I'm going to ask this house if I can fill up my drink bottle there. This friendly local brought me to his water supply which was rather questionable. So the water has stuff floating in it and I really hope I don't get sick. The climb up was through dense forest and I saw a raccoon. After a few hours climb, a car stopped. He stopped to give me a juice. I eventually reached the top and I got some fresh water from the temple. I slowly explored the temple grounds and enjoyed the views from this high mountain. I collected my calligraphy stamp and met these friendly locals. Then I was surprised by so many statues. Their expressions are just amazing. There is a rope way to get down from the temple, but I decided to take the long way. And this involved walking through an army of statues. This one was my favorite. Made my way down the mountain path towards the next temple where I asked if I could set up my tent for the night. The monk's wife brought me koala biscuits as a gift. Five more days to go. Today is all road walking, which is a big difference from yesterday, which was all in the mountains. This is day 41 on the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. I packed up my tent at the temple and then this local told me I was going the wrong way. I found some mulberries and picked them to eat on the way to the next temple. There were a lot of stairs, so I left my backpack at the bottom and said goodbye. There was this interesting plant with prayers all over it. Turns out I was at the Shinto shrine and not the temple, but I still got a stamp anyway. I quickly got back on the path because it's T minus two hours before the rain arrives. Walked past this mochi restaurant and I had to stop to try some, but I got a surprise instead. I went to buy just a few mochi from that lady and she gifted me my lunch. Thank you. I kept plodding along trying to beat the rain, but it got me. I waited the rain out in this temple and got my calligraphy stamp, but the rain did not stop. So I decided to hitch a ride to the next temple and then they invited me for lunch. We had to order through this vending machine. First day in Kagawa and I got to try Kagawa Udon. They dropped me to the next temple and I started my climb up the stairs. This temple's grounds was quite large and had lots of shrines to visit and a great bell tower. Then because of the rain, I chose not to camp and stay at a hostel where some other pilgrim friends were staying. Only four more days left to finish. It's currently the 1,250th anniversary of Kobodashi, who's the monk that we're all following on this pilgrimage. And now in Kagawa, the last prefecture, which is the Nirvana stage of the pilgrimage, it's like a festival. So every temple has like entertainment and music and dancing. Welcome to day 42 on the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. I said goodbye to my friend from Estonia and got stuck under this bridge. I reached Zensuchi Temple, which is the birthplace of Kobodaishi. Here, the festivities were in full swing with dancers from Kyoto arriving to celebrate the 1,250 years of the pilgrimage. This temple was like a mini city with so many things to do and see. Today's pilgrim path was very urban. Thanks to whoever put that there. The monk at the temple just gifted me a whole bag of snacks. Sometimes the signs to tell you where to go is so small. You've got to keep your eyes peeled the whole walk. Yeah, today I got lost quite a bit. But under one of the temples was a passageway to see all these little Buddhas. I'm riding my bike to dinner, yeah. Only three more days left. I gotta get a move on. Yeah. We're just walking through the doors to yeah. Temple 80 and it is beautiful. Cool. It's day 43 walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage and you won't believe it. It's raining again. <laughs> like most days lately, it's raining. I walked to the next temple with my new friend from Taiwan. The day I was going back in the mountains to temple 81 and 82. I ran back into my friend from Estonia. A local man and his friends had put these free drinks here as a gift for pilgrims. And other locals had put a tea station and snacks for us. This is how it feels when you finally see the gate of the temple after climbing a mountain. But there was more stairs to come. The temples up in the mountain are always the quietest and most peaceful. I took the wrong turn and I ended up walking in the wrong direction <laughs> but with what happened next it was like i was meant to walk in the wrong direction what this temple had cats everywhere not just cats also these things and then all of a sudden i met the most famous cat of the cat temple and all her little friends six more temples to see and only two days left 
Okay guys, I'm in a mad dash now to the finish line, unfortunately. I took it too easy in the beginning and now I'm running out of time. This is day 44 on the 88 Temple Pilgrimage. The morning started with watching locals go about their morning routine. Then at Temple 83, I met this couple who invited me to go with them to the next temple. You guys know me by now, so of course I said yes. We rode this little tram up the mountain to the next temple. At the temple, they got me a gift and asked if I wanted to join them all the way to Temple 88. Without them, I don't think I would have finished the pilgrimage in time to get to my flight. He invited me for a famous Kagawa Udon lunch, and he showed me his grandmother's stick that she walked the 88 Temple pilgrimage with. It was quite emotional to walk through the last gate of the 88 temples. This is the walking stick graveyard. The couple waved me goodbye for ages. I fly out in 48 hours from Tokyo. I didn't meet any other pilgrims walking from Temple 88 to 1. <laughs> They're all over the camera. Ah! These last 44 kilometers, I think, are going to be the hardest. A farmer just called me over and gave me this. I set up my tent for the night in the hut. Then this local saw me and invited me in to stay in her home. She cooked me dinner and invited her family to come meet me. So of course I gave them a hula hoop show and taught them some tricks too. This is my last night on the pilgrimage and what a way to finish. I can't believe it's nearly over. Hey, I'm Kira and I've just spent the last 45 days walking the 88 Temple Pilgrimage in Japan. And on the way, I've been gifting all the osetai I got last night from that woman. I've gifted all the candy and the food. I've gifted the money I received as osetai from another lady today. So now everyone gets that gift. Even the monkeys came to cheer me on. All right, let's do it. Three more kilometers. I reached Temple One, rang the bell, and visited the temple. I met the guy who made my hat and got my last calligraphy stamp. Many other pilgrims finished that day, so we got the train back together. I'm at the airport. I'm going to Tokyo. On to the next adventure. Well, hey guys, how'd you like the videos? That was day one all the way to day 45. I know it was really long. Trust me, when I was exporting this video, it took me hours. <laughs> Tell me what you thought about it in the comments. Now, I'm going to be sharing, of course, a lot more videos about the cost, about what's in my backpack, and I've also got a bunch of raw footage horizontally filmed of all the temples and of more me talking longer to the camera about what's happening on the trail. So I'll be posting them in the coming weeks as I slowly edit them. Now, I want to share with you something a little bit personal and a little bit what I'm asked a lot, actually. Like, I get this question all the time on Instagram is, what did I learn or my spiritual learning from the pilgrimage? So what I learned, I learned a lot of things, but what the main thing that I learned was to trust again. Now that might sound a bit strange, but you saw all the kindness in these videos. You saw the local people giving so much to me. And I didn't expect that. I didn't read that in any blogs before I was going on this. I didn't know that was going to be a thing. Now, as any of you, I have similar boundaries, uh, I have trust issues, <laughs> and it, those were all melted away with the kindness. Oh my gosh, the absolute kindness of Japanese people, especially in Shokoku, they, how much they supported me. So the biggest spiritual and life lesson I learned on this pilgrimage is to trust again and to remain open to my community. And always really to think the best instead of jumping to like the worst possible scenario that could happen. I remember the first time, this is story time now, <laughs> I remember the first time I got an osetai and that was a food osetai, it was a drink, right? And an osetai, if you don't know by now, is a gift. So I got this, uh, someone come up to me, they wanted to give me this gift of a drink and of course my mind jumped to the worst possible scenario of oh my god they're trying to poison me what is why are they giving me a drink what's their agenda all these stories all these things i made up and then <laughs> i they of course i was like no no i don't want it, i don't want it and then they were like no no please take it and i was like and i accepted it i said yes and that was the beginning of me saying yes to the journey, to life, to everything. 
and I drank that drink and of course my mind was still like jumping around with these stories about all these possible bad scenarios that could happen and unfortunately that's where a lot of our minds go right now I hope that you will be able to find some clarity as well and release yourself from that story sure it might come back up once now and again but be open to life trust your community say yes to things then you'll have a really awesome adventure. Now, if you love this video, please, please, please subscribe. I know everyone always says that on here. And this is my first long form video here. So I'd really love the support because as a subscriber, you're going to help me to start to become monetized on here. And what does that mean? It means I can start earning some money because right now all I'm doing is making videos and not making squat. I'm not making any money at all. Just complete transparency with you. I'm running my business full time. So I'm an entrepreneur and I run a circus entertainment business and a circus online hula hoop shop. And that's in Australia. So I am going back to Australia, doing shows, doing work, earning money. And then I'm going away and traveling and doing all these things on my bucket list and filming them because I really want to share them and inspire you to also go and adventure and explore this beautiful world of ours. So by subscribing, what you're going to do is help me get to be monetized. So I need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, which is a lot, but I'm hoping to get there. And if I do get there, then this can help me make more videos, adventure more, share more with you. I'm about to go to Europe and I want to film a series about talking with local people about their experiences of life. And I want to share that here because I want to share authentic travel. I'm not here to share this is this beautiful hotel. Oh, this is this beautiful resort that like no one can really afford to go to. <laughs> so I hope this relates with and resonates with you. And if it doesn't, that's fine. But if it does, please subscribe and support me and drop me a comment. All right, guys, have an awesome day. I hope you have a beautiful week ahead. This is Monday and I am about to go explore a Buddhist temple in Sunshine Coast. I'll be making a video about that one too. All right, guys, enjoy. Bye.